So it's Martin Eastwood with Jermaine McGilvery, um, and he's just going to answer a few questions that the HGSA members have sent in to us. So uh, thanks for joining us, Jerry. No problem. Uh, so the first question is, do you prefer being called Jerry or Jermaine, or are you bothered? Uh, I'm not really bothered. Uh, I think my mum hates uh, the Jerry. Uh, most of my mates uh, call me Jermaine. It's just uh, it's probably more of a, a rugby thing. People call me Jerry, but... Uh, I'm I'm really not not too bothered. So, so you're all right being referred to either or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Fair yeah. enough. Right. So I'll call you Jerry if that's all right. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Sure know, yeah. Right. So the first question we've got is: Did Simon Wolford leaving the club affect the playing staff? And if so, how? Uh, I don't think so. Really, I, I think. Uh, it, it was, obviously it was a, a weird situation that how we left and that, uh, but I, I think with the way results were going and stuff, uh, like most players and I think most people weren't weren't surprised. But uh, at the end of the day, Simon, he's come he's come from Australia. He's you know he's left his kids uh, back home. He's he's made a sacrifice. He's, you know it's it's not quite worked out for him. But it was a good guy. Uh, you know there's a a few of us who who got along with him. Um, and we we met up with him after and, and whatnot, had a coffee and stuff. But yeah, he's a nice guy. It just just didn't work out for him. Right. Was it was it his decision or was it mainly the club's decision? Um, uh, you read, I, read from the fans, and sometimes the fans say it was sacked, and others say he chose to walk. So yeah, I think it was mutual. Uh, I, I think uh, I think he ca maybe kind of had enough. Maybe the club had had enough of. Of him, I, I don't know, but I, I'm not quite certain on that. But I think it was uh, a bit of both, if, 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 in my opinion, anyway. Yeah, so just best all round then. Yeah. <laughs> um, so next question is, what's your opinion on Ian Watson coming in to replace him and also Greg Bound returning to the club? Uh, on, with Ian, uh, so I've, I worked with him a bit uh, with Great Britain and, and I thought it was, it was really good. Uh, you know, his attention to detail is... Is, is crazy. I remember it was uh, my day off one time and I was walking through the, the hotel lobby and he grabbed me and he said, oh, I've got some video for you to watch. I'm like, it was like my day off, but he was like showing me a few clips and everything. He was always on his laptop looking at games and stuff. So, you know, you could tell he was proper into it and he was on the training field. He, he was really smart. He was doing a lot of work with us. So uh, I'm, I'm really excited. For, uh, probably the most excited I've been in a, in a long time uh, for him to come in. Um, hopefully he gets the best out of me because... I don't think I've uh, been too great recently, but uh, you know, hopefully this is this is something that could uh, kickstart me getting getting back to form. And uh, for Greg, uh, I, I, I see Greg more more times uh, than, than most people. So I, I I used to live with Greg when I first started at the Giants. Uh, both our kids play uh, Manchester City together, so we we see each other quite like quite a lot, maybe two three times a, as a week. So uh, for him to come back uh, is. Is, is great, you know, like the the last time he was here, he got us all fit and, and ready to play. And, you know, I can't remember, honestly, the last time, except for when I go into England camp, because we, we have like a like a mini preseason, I can't remember the last time I've actually like felt, felt proper, really fit. And, and that's in conditioning and strength-wise. Sometimes I feel fit, like conditioning-wise, but then I'm, I'm not quite strong. Then I get strong, but I'm, I'm sluggish. I've not had that balance in, in, in a long time. Uh, going away with England and stuff doesn't help me because I miss out on pre-seasons. And uh, I have, I, I've had uh, like op operations in the last, within the last five years, I've pulled out of three or four operations. So that's not helped uh, as well. But this time there's no England, there's no nothing. Uh, new coaches come in, new conditioners come in. So I get time to get my body right like I am doing now uh, before I go in. And then, you know, I'll get a proper pre-season under my belt. So I'm excited about that as well. Yeah, so you, you've just answered the next question. So the next question was, do you have a good relationship with Greg and what was his, what was his strengths? Well, you've obviously mentioned that. Um, yeah. How has the testimonial been going and how much has the pandemic affected it? Yeah, it's, it's affected it massively, really. But what, what can you do? Uh, I, I'm not too disheartened because there's a, a, lot of, a lot of people are a lot worse off uh, in the world than me. So I can't be complaining. Uh, but it, it is where it is. Uh, it was unfortunate. I was good. I had the opportunity to uh, extend it, but I, I thought Jordan Turner was going to be here, so I, I said I'm not going to extend it. But uh, you know, it's, it's just one of them things. But I'm I'm, I'm happy overall. But uh, it could have been better. Um, 
Next question. If you weren't around, who would you pick to be the two England wing wingers and why? Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of wingers I rate, English wingers. Uh, Ash Hanley, uh, Tommy Makinson, Tom Johnston. And there's a, there's a few young ones uh, popping up here and, here and about. Uh, but I'd probably say out, out of them three, really, uh, for me, at this moment in time, anyway, uh, they're all quality. They, I, I reckon... All three of them have got a bit of everything, you know, the, the lightning quick, the really strong, the great under a high ball, uh, top finishers as well. Uh, so I think, I don't think going forward uh, as, as England, we're going to ever struggle uh, within the next decade or so with, with outside backs. I think, I think we're fully stacked. It's just having that performance on, on the big stage, you know, so hopefully whoever gets picked come World Cup time is we could go one better than we did last time. Right, so so which two would you go with then? Oh, it's tough. I, <laughs> definitely, I'd have to say definitely Tommy Makinson because I've played alongside him. Uh, but I have a good relationship with uh, both uh, Tom and Ash. Uh, it, honestly, it's a flick of a coin because they're both quality, they're both young. So I'm going to de definitely Tommy Makinson and the two. It depends on the day, it depends what the weather's like. Yeah, but only one of them getting because obviously you'd be... You'd be yeah, yeah, one, yeah, yeah. Um, so the next question is similar to that. Do you think you'll still be first choice for England for next year's World Cup? I don't know. It depends on a lot of things. Obviously, like I said before, uh, the fitness, uh, my form and stuff like that. Obviously, I'll, that, that's something I'm aiming for. Uh, and hopefully it gets the best out of me as well, some, if I've got something to, to aim for. Uh, but I'm, I'm not sure. But I'd love to be a part, regardless if I was the starting winger or not, or I'm pushing for that start. But I'd love to be a part of the squad, especially in a World Cup. You know, I'm not. I'm not getting any younger now, so it'd be some uh, really good to be a part of, especially being on home soil as well. Yeah, I've got another question. It says, "Can you ever see yourself moving to the second row, perhaps towards the end of your career, like some backs do, or will you always be a winger?" Yeah, you know, I'm open to anything. You know, uh, whatever's best for the team, and if I, if I'm if I'm any good there, you know, I've I've got three years left on my contract. Uh, I don't know how, how long I'm going to go after that, if I'm going to go any longer. That, that could be me after these three years. So I'm, I'm really not bothered as, lo as long as I'm, you know, I'm enjoying it and I could uh, offer something to the team. You know, I'll be more than happy. So you could be playing loose forward for England in next year's World Cup then as well. <laughs> I don't know if I play at that level uh, in, that, in that position. But, you know, if you it, never know. Yeah, you never know. But if it's going to help the team, I'm, I'm happy to do anything. Yeah, good man. Um, right, so you were heavily linked with the move to the NRL after the 2017 World Cup and then the speculation disappeared after you signed a new contract. Yeah. How truthful were the rumours and did any clubs reach out to you and do you regret not taking your talents down under? Yes, yeah, so I, I did speak, when I was out there, I spoke to a, a few people uh, and obviously when I came back, I spoke to a couple, but it was never going to happen because uh, when I was talking to the clubs and stuff, yeah, they they don't pay transfer fees over there, and Huddersfield was not going to let me go without a transfer fee. And, and fair enough, like you know, I'm I'm, I'm there playing. It's it, they're in control at the end of the day. Uh, so uh, looking back at my career now, obviously I'm, I'm towards the back end of my career now. There's a, there's quite a few things that I regret, uh, and I won't say so much the Australian move, but there's been opportunities I could move. But looking now. Uh, probably, I, I I probably made the wrong decision. Uh, you know, to, uh, picking maybe security over over maybe going and challenging myself, moving a different part of the of, of the country to to you know to challenge myself. But I think that was a big thing for me. I didn't. I, I felt like I I owed Huddersfield a, a lot because uh, I, I was a I was a nobody. They let me come and train with the academy. Uh, you know, when when I wasn't working, they brought me up uh, full time. Uh, so when it when it came to for the opportunities because there was one I was I was really close close to doing I agreed everything agreed money, uh, and it, it was probably one of the stub, the main stubble stuff was saying I had to go move, and I, I'm I'm a proper homeboy, uh, but looking back now uh, with with it's it's all in hindsight because with all the stuff that's gone on especially, uh, I'm, I'm thinking, you know sh should I have done it. Uh, you know, and, and I probably, I, I probably should have. Looking back now, if, if I'm really honest, and I'm not, I'm not um, telling the truth. Like I, sh I should have probably done it. Yeah, yeah. So a bit like Earl, and you put your loyalty towards Huddersfield. Yeah, but you see, before the glory kind of thing. 
Yeah, but in this game, as I've noticed, as I'm getting older now, loyal means nothing. You know, the same people uh, who are cheering you and you know saying how good you are, the same people that will be praying for your downfall, don't want to see you in the team and stuff like that. So that's 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 one of the a, a big reason as well. I'm, I'm like looking at that, I'm thinking. I should, I should. I should have just gone. I should have gone. No, no one cares. No one really cares when you when you're not doing too well. Everyone, everyone wants. They don't want to see you come back up. They don't want to. You know, they, they, they're just preying on your downfall. When you when you when you're in your form, when you're in form and stuff like that, everyone's cheering for you. But you know, loyalty gets you nowhere. That's what I've learned anyway. Yeah, it's so it turns doesn't it from yeah. hero to zero sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Far. Do you um do you tend to read like social media forums and things like that? Is it kind of thing players do or? No, I know players do do that, and uh, but my obviously my I've got a lot of friends uh, on Facebook and you know on different uh, sites like Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that. So they so a couple of my mates are jokers, so they they like to sh- uh, send me stuff uh, sometimes. So I, I do see some stuff. I don't I don't go looking for it because I really I'm not really. Ah, so to speak, I'm not really bothered. Uh, but when I do see stuff, when they send it me, uh, you know, I laugh it off. But when I when I really think about it, it, it you know, it's I, it kind of kind of like annoys me a little bit. But you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion. Like yeah. I just I just link it to like when I'm cause I'm a big Liverpool supporter, and like when they're losing and stuff like that, I'll say, oh, he's rubbish. He's, he's this and that. Well, I don't mean it, but I'm a grown man. I would never go on like put on social media like I'm <laughs> I'm some little kid or something. But it is what it is. It's sport, you know. Uh, people pay the money to have an uh, to have an opinion as well. So, no, I say it when you think you're not you're not really had a partnership, have you, for a couple of years? So uh, again, it takes it takes getting all that back together again, doesn't it? Well, yeah, of course it does. You know, you need relationships, whether that be in, uh, in training and into games. But when you're having a, a centre for three weeks, then for a week, then for a part, mm. it, it, it is hard. But it's, it's not obviously. It's, it's no no, re- no excuse not to to do well, but you know having a good partnership like me and Leroy did at the at the very beginning for for many years, it just shows how how good we we were and you know and how good we can be as well. Absolutely, yeah. So just on you um, on on your game, uh, we all know your your strengths, which is taking the ball in and and, and your your strength in scoring. But what would you say your weaknesses are in your game? Uh, if there are any. Nah, of course, is. I'd say my decision making at times is is, is not good. Cause I think my uh, my my positioning, you know, sometimes is, is not great. I, I lack in concentration sometimes. Uh, like I've never been lightning quick. You've you've never seen me see me score too many hundred meter tries. But I, I I've still got my early pace. But I still I, I need to improve on that. I reckon uh, I need to I need to keep 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 in shape more. You know, I get I get kind of some decent fitness and. You know, I let that slack a bit uh, as the season goes on. You know, when I get little little knocks and stuff like that, you know, it, it's hard for me to 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 push as, as many weights as I normally do. But there, there's a lot of things I, I I need to improve on. You know, I need to I need a coach to to help me as well. I need people around me to help me. I think uh, what what's been happening in the last I'd say probably the last maybe three years uh, with me because everyone sees me as a, an international player as a you know, an experienced player. They just left left me alone. He knows what he's doing. So yeah. I, it's it's really hard. I I need to I need to be taught. People have to remember what when I came I came from nowhere from rugby. I didn't watch rugby or nothing. So all this has been manufactured by people who've been around me, like the likes of Nathan Brown, uh, Blue, and like players like Scott Griggs, Dave Hodgson. You know, Kev Brown. They've all helped me. People have had their input. So now, like, because I've I played at the at the top level now. People just think I, I know it all and I, I don't need help. And you know, I've, it's kind of probably probably a bit on me as well. Not not uh, going to coaches and, and stuff like that and saying help me with this, help me with that. They've just kind of left me, and I've just kind of rolled with it. Uh, whereas I know from my experience with Watto and uh, speaking to players about him way before I knew that it were it were coming uh, over the years because I've had friends at Salford. Uh, who weren't playing and who used to say he was a good coach and that. But I know he's he's like he's a, he's a kind of rugby rugby league geek and and I know he'll he'll help me w- with with my game because I didn't even I didn't really talk to him and that day uh, that day when he just grabbed me and like explained some stuff to me about uh, about my game and stuff like that. I, I didn't ask him nothing about it. He's just been watching games and seeing it and thought he, 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 I could benefit from it. Yeah. So it's one of them. So I, that, that's why I'm excited. 
because uh, I know what he's about and I know what his, his teams, his coaches have about and staying with uh, GB uh, coming along and hopefully that can help me because I'm a player that I, I need guidance, I need help, I might be experienced, I might be 32 years old but you know everything I've, I know I've, and I've learned is, has been in the last decade and people have you know at times struggled to, to get it across to me because you know it, it's hard, it's hard because mm. I'm not playing the game consistently as a, as a young kid I've like been in and out of the game and you know playing football and stuff but yeah I'm, I'm hoping that someone has a has a belief in me and you know keeps keeps me on my toes as well because it uh, you know like I said I am I'm still learning no matter how many games I play for England or Huddersfield or Super League games I'm, I'm learning and people need to understand that as well well you never stop learning I suppose do you and you can never no. never stop being coached and everything like that no um, <clears throat> what do you plan to do after after your playing career ends? Uh, I don't know. It's, I'm kind of at a point now. Uh, I'm just th- just thinking about it. So I've, I've got I've got a few properties uh, in and around uh, Huddersfield. So I'm may, maybe get get a few more before I finish, and you know maybe fall into that. Uh, I don't know if there's something going uh, within rugby league, uh, possibly. But you just never know. You know, there's not many jobs within rugby, so. It's not something that I've looked at uh, rugby-wise, but I've, I've tried, just just been trying to set up my, my own thing. So I think uh, for now, at this moment in time, it's a property thing that I'm I'm kind of uh, going into. But you know, I, I wouldn't. I, I'd love to to be a part of a, a rugby when I finish. But uh, you just never know, and, uh, and who's going to be about at the time and what jobs are available. So, mm, so, we'll so just no, have... con- no concrete plans or anything. Then no, no, no. nothing. Um. Who was your best mate at the club? Uh, I'd probably say uh, Bruno and Leroy, probably my, uh, who I'm closest with, you know, could basically come through with them. I've known Leroy since I was about nine, ten, playing against him and, and with him uh, in, in, in rugby and stuff. And obviously Bruno since I've I've come here. So we're pretty close. We've, you know, we talk more or less every day. You know, we've got our own little group chat. So I'd probably say them, but I, I, get, I get along with pretty much everyone, you know, uh, uh, with the young lads and stuff, I, I talk a, a lot with them, uh, and obviously the, the senior boys. But I'd say them two are probably the ones I'm, I'm more close to in the group. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned the, the the young lads. One of the questions is how is it how important is it that the club continue to produce our own academy products? Yeah, it, it's massive, uh, and I've seen the stuff that have come out like uh, academy boys aren't going to be getting paid and and. And stuff uh, now, which is going to be really difficult for them. I, I knew how difficult it was just being on three grand a year training full, full time. So for them to be getting nothing and potentially coming up to the first team and, and maybe getting uh, nothing if, they, if they're just training and doing the studies as well. But yeah, uh, for the longevity of, of the of the club, we you know we've always turned over a good good amount of youngsters, even if they've not. Finally, come into our first team. They've gone into other first teams and, and stuff like that, which I think is good. It, it shows that we, we can produce. You know, we can coach. Whether they they make it here or in the lower leagues or at different clubs, you know, it's it's, a, it's an attractive place to come as a as a young player. So I think it's highly important, not just for Huddersfield and, and our first team, but for the game as well. And financial as well, I suppose, for the club, isn't it as well because. Bring your own players through. You're not having to pay out on salary cap. You're not having to pay for marquee players and things like that. Yeah, I've always been told as a as a as a player by when I was a young player that you, to make the money you have to make the move, uh, so to, so to speak, unless you become a, a, a huge star. So yeah, that that's true as well. So the, you save a lot on money if you produce your own. Yeah, and finally, how important a role do the HGSA play in raising funds for the academy development? Because obviously, yes. you know, everything we do, we, we we give the money back to the to the club for the academy. How important is that? For, you know, from from a first team player's point of view. Yeah, see, I didn't know about this uh, until a couple of years back, and I think I think that's massive. Uh, it's huge for for the academy for for all this all the stuff that they get the 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 kits and you know the the travelling uh, you guys funding them it's 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 amazing and I I don't know if many other clubs do it but uh, it was it was news to me when when uh, when the boys were, were talking about it uh, some years ago so I think it, I think it's massive I think it's a good community thing as well like shows we're, we're all together and you know supporting. Not not just the first team coming to watch us, but you're supporting the next generation, the next superstar. So I think I think it's huge, and you know, and you know, for for me anyway, I, I'm grateful because I, I didn't I didn't know. So 
you know, anything you guys have on and you need some of I me, mean, just just let me know.